Hey guys, I wanted to talk about this card, uh, and it's really nice. Uh, out of the case only, I didn't pull any from the booster boxes, but out of the case, I pulled four of them, including a foil pre-release one, which in my opinion is the best version of her. I'm starting to like pre-release uh, stamps just because they're becoming harder and harder to get. And especially as a legendary vampire creature, she has a certain EDH appeal. And having the stamp is kind of nice. Um, I, I like it over not having the stamp if I had to choose between those two. Now, I like her ability. First of all, a 2 free for one triple bla a double black flying first strike is relatively good. I mean, I look at it and I say to myself, huh. And it also, I should mention, it's both a vampire and an ally. Allies in are incredibly weak right now. But that doesn't mean that the next set won't, or the next um, expansion set won't help her. Allies might be a ton stronger in the next, and it would make sense from a flavor standpoint that, oh, the allies are losing, so they're really bad, which they are. And then the next set, they're winning, and then they become very strong. She's probably the best ally, unless you consider Gideon an ally. But even outside of an ally, I'm going to play her in black-white tokens. The reason that black-white tokens, last Planeswalkers, is so appealing to me, this card, if you attack with it, it does first strike damage, and then it puts a counter on itself. So if you have no other creatures in it, it's still very viable as a one double black drop. It just seems extremely good in that particular slot. Now, let's say you have a creature. You attack with your creatures, she does her first strike damage, and then she puts the plus one, plus one counters on everybody on your team, including herself, but your other creatures before they deal damage. So your creatures are going to deal a ton more damage. So if you have a goblin fodder, you had this, then you attack with it the next turn, she would do two damage, put a counter on herself, and then those goblin fodder tokens would do four damage instead of two. And I think it's amazing because the deck, the, the, the type of decks she actually fits well in is the Scion decks, the little 1-1 one, one tokens. So instead of goblin tokens, don't we have this other type of token? And a lot of people, like if it was just a 1-1 one, one goblin token, and you look at some of these cards like Blight Herder, you'd be like, oh wow, that's pretty good. But because people are going to be like, oh, I want to sacrifice it. And remember, a 1-1, one, one, we're not talking about 0-1s here. We're not talking about plants anymore. We're talking about 1-1s one that can actually attack. Uh, those 1-1s, one in my opinion, outside of Goblin effects, are not any worse than a 1-1 one, one who can sacrifice itself. The sacrifice is a upside. It's an option. I like her a ton. Um, and the reason I like her so much, C represents everything Aggro wants to do. Aggro wants to pump itself. Aggro wants to attack with evasion creatures. And Aggro wants to have cards that can dominate a game. This card can absolutely take over a game. And mainly because it has I mean, it, a plus one, plus one counter. We're not talking about I mean, some cards are playable or have been playable in the past. And they only give plus one, plus one until end of turn. We're talking about a counter already. Anyway, this card is fantastic. I love it. This is the card I am most looking forward to playing. And I think it all has to do with the fact that I loved her the first time around, but she wasn't really quite playable. And her, even her foil, I do collect foil versions of her old one. And the foil version, I still think I, I, it's so good though. Like it kills a creature and pumps her. The foil version is... I don't know, like four dollars maybe, maybe less. Beautiful card. I can I can imagine collecting quite a bit of, of her because yeah, it's definitely the type of card that I would collect a lot of.